Video games are a lightning rod for controversies and major PR gaffes. And as much as companies never want to admit responsibility for anything and risk opening themselves up to legal action, in the case of these 10 video game developers, each fell on their swords and apologized to the masses that they'd swindled, offended, and are shown not a shred of respect for. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 recent video game disasters developers apologize for. Number 10, CD Projekt Red apologize for everything about Cyberpunk 2077's launch. Cyberpunk 2077 finally hit shelves late last year. Though the game's long anticipated launch was beset by massive issues across the board, namely an abundance of bugs on all platforms, and notably poor performance on last gen consoles. Developers CD Projekt Red were raked over the coals for the especially shameless decision not to release any gameplay footage from the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions of the game, effectively attempting to conceal their performance problems until the game was actually in people's consoles. The blowback was significant enough that the developer issued an apology just four days after Cyberpunk 2077's release, fully copying to the fact that they didn't release any last-gen gameplay footage. They said, quote, We would like to start by apologizing for not showing the game on base last-gen consoles before it premiered and, in consequence, not allowing you to make a more informed decision about your purchase. We should have paid more attention to making it play better on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. End quote. Number 9, Warner Brothers apologize for Injustice 2 Mobile's Tone Deaf Pride Month Challenge. The mobile version of 2017's fighting game Injustice 2 faced major blowback from the LGBTQ community this past summer when Warner Brothers released a horrendously tone deaf in-game challenge to commemorate Pride Month. The challenge, titled A Love Conquers All, encouraged the community to quote unquote celebrate Pride Month by fighting and defeating Poison Ivy, which upon passing certain victory milestones, namely 500,000 community wins against her would unlock huge prizes. But many fans took umbrage with the challenge given that Ivy is herself a canonically bisexual character, and so encouraging players to beat her up hundreds of thousands of times in the name of pride didn't really sit right. Understandably, it wasn't long before the game's official Twitter account offered a contrite response and apologized. Fortunately, the apology was generally well received by the game's fans, who saw it more as a tone-deaf mistake than something done in genuinely bad faith. Number 8, Play Magic apologized for the 13 remake being an absolute mess. There was a lot of excitement when Cult Classic 2003 FPS 13 was announced to be getting the remake treatment. However, that enthusiasm quickly cooled once the first screenshots and gameplay footage were released, making it clear that developers Play Magic had significantly reworked the game's iconic cell shaded art style to be more quote unquote realistic. After a year's worth of delays, the remake was finally released last November to vitriolic reviews from both press and players alike. Complaints stemming from the art style changes to the addition of a weapon limit and also the presence of many, many books. It wasn't long before the game was stuck with an overwhelmingly negative consensus on Steam, and less than a week after the remake was released, Playmagic and publisher Microids issued a joint statement apologizing for the end product and explaining that the issues came from working through a pandemic. Now, while the pandemic has of course affected the development of many video games over the last 18 months, it hardly explained or excused the remake's unnecessary changes from the original. The bugs, sure, but the fundamentals of the game weren't impacted by the pandemic. And though updates did fix some of the technical issues, many frustrated fans responded by simply purchasing the original game on Steam instead. Talk about voting with your wallet. Number 7, Undead Labs apologize for State of Decay 2's punched Nazis controversy. Despite first releasing in 2018, State of Decay 2 was back in the headlines earlier this year when Steam Marines 2 developer James Ciao discovered that among the random traits the survivors are given, there was a rather eyebrow raising one. Ciao came across the trait punched Nazis, which though hardly controversial in and of itself, was accompanied by text describing the attribute as making the characters quote unquote irritable towards other people. Xiao and others interpreted this as mocking progressive politics in the very least, or far worse, actively downplaying the harm caused by Nazis. With the ire building against Undead Labs, the game's official Twitter account eventually released a lengthy apology to Xiao and offended players, while explaining that the negative attribute was a mere accident. Xiao nevertheless decried that it took Undead Labs more than a week to offer a proper response to the issue, though the controversy dissipated among the wider community relatively quickly following the apology. 
Number 6. Sony apologised for the PS5 pre-order tobacco. Locking down a PlayStation 5 for pre-order last year sure was a mess, largely due to Sony themselves failing to adequately organise and control the situation before pre-orders went live. Mere hours after the PS5 price and date reveal last September, god I can't believe it's been so long already, pre-orders for the console suddenly went live, despite Sony previously promising that all retailers and customers would be given adequate time to prepare for the pre-order rush. It wasn't quite clear whether chain of communication broke down, but many customers were nevertheless left frustrated that the gun was jumped, causing many to lose out on pre-orders in the process. This was especially frustrating given the stock shortages caused by manufacturing during the pandemic, resulting in Sony offering an apology on Twitter a few days later while assuring players that they were generating as much new stock as fast as possible. Sadly, there are still PS5 shortages at the time of this recording, so this apology didn't really mean too much to the people who lost out. Number 5. Neostream apologised for racist caricatures in Little Devil Inside Neostream Interactive's upcoming action-adventure game Little Devil Inside was shown off at the PS5 reveal event back in June 2020. And while many were enamoured with the game's gorgeous visuals and enticing gameplay, others pointed out some unsavoury character designs. In the gameplay trailer, the protagonist can be seen being chased by enemies which appear to resemble traditional racist caricatures of black or indigenous tribal people. The enemies in question wear masks bearing exaggerated red lips often associated with minstrelsy and other offensive historical depictions of black people, to say nothing of the stereotypical lion cloth and dreadlocks to convey a quote-unquote tribal look. Neostream soon offered an apology and also vowed to change the enemy's design to be more culturally sensitive. Number 4. CI Games apologise for gross Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2 press event Video game controversies don't get much weirder than this. Shortly after the release of Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2, The Gamer reported on one of the game's horrendously mismanaged pre-release press events. The event in question took place at a military training compound in California and it invited journalists to fire M4-style airsoft rifles at actors dressed in stereotypical Arab attire. Worse still, a flag was flown over the facility reading Trump 2024 The Revenge Tour, and the gamer's journalist Eric Schweitzer was also told that the event would take place without any of the facility's employees wearing masks. The report stirred up plenty of ire against CI Games, who responded with a thorough apology, admitting their lack of oversight, saying, quote, We would like to apologise directly to Eric Schweitzer from The Gamer and to any other participants who found the event offensive. Although the COVID restrictions made arranging the event unusually difficult, we take full responsibility and will work hard to ensure that in future any events associated with the Sniper Ghost Warrior franchise live up to the standards of respect and tolerance that we set ourselves." End quote. CI additionally explained that the company running the event refused their request to change their actor's attire to avoid offensive stereotypes, but presumably rather than pull the plug on a costly to organise event, CI misguidedly allowed it to go ahead. Number 3. The Moon Studios founder apologised for calling Peter Molyneux and others snake oil salesmen. At the start of 2021, Thomas Mailer, CEO of Moon Studios and director of the Ori franchise, made a post on Reset Era where he heavily criticised game developers who have misled the general public, branding them quote-unquote snake oil salesmen. Mailer aimed his ire at three figures in particular, Fable developer and repeat underdeliverer Peter Molyneux, No Man's Sky's Sean Murray and Cyberpunk 2077 dev CD Projekt Red. He called out the court lies and deception on which he claimed their games were sold, while also calling out games journalists for not sufficiently taking them to task. Now, this post was met with major division, as many gamers expressed agreement with his comments while others, especially fellow developers and even some of Marla's former co-workers, felt that he was effectively throwing his own industry colleagues under the bus. Regardless, he did eventually apologise, stating that he quote, did not choose the right tone or platform, acknowledging his quote, overly aggressive tone. Number 2. Konami apologised for eFootball 2022, the worst rated Steam game ever. Oh boy, the recent rebranding of Konami's Pro Evolution Soccer franchise has been nothing short of a complete disaster. The inaugural entry into the rejigged series, titled eFootball 2022, hit stores at the end of September and was immediately panned by critics and players alike, citing its dated graphics, poor controls, overabundance of bugs, and general lack of content. Just look at this, just look at all of these videos. In fact, by this point, you probably don't even want to because you'll have seen this Messi in this Ronaldo everywhere. The IA was sufficient enough that eFootball 2022 quickly became the worst rated Steam game in history. Shortly thereafter, Konami issued a groveling apology to fans while promising the game would be whipped into shape soon enough. At the time of recording though, we're yet to see what changes are going to be made. 
Number 1. Nintendo apologise for the Nintendo Switch's Joy-Con drift The Nintendo Switch is an undeniable engineering marvel, an incredible marriage of handheld and traditional games console that deserves every ounce of its mammoth success. But Nintendo has also been criticised for one major aspect of the console's design, the dreaded Joy-Con drift. In the years since the Switch's release, many players have reported that their Joy-Cons will register inputs even when not being touched. This is typically caused by dust or dirt coming into contact with the controller's internal analog stick sensors resulting in a number of class action lawsuits being filed against Nintendo, one of which even accused them of intentionally building the defect into the controllers as planned obsolescence. This prompted Nintendo to start offering free repairs to effective customers regardless of warranty status, and for Nintendo President Shuntaro Furukawa to offer a public apology last summer. Nintendo has claimed that the recently released OLED Switch model features a newly designed Joy-Con which should cut down on the drift, though also admitted that the issue ultimately can't ever be fully prevented due to natural wear and tear. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any similar video game controversies you know that developers apologise for? And can you answer me why all controllers in the world get Joy-Con drift? My PlayStation 5 controller is just as bad as the Switch is. It's, it's infuriating. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.